vessels. Our next guest wants to take steps to make sure they never do. An only Republican congressman and Air Force veteran Adam Kinziger joins us now. Congressman, thanks so much for, for being with us. You have been calling for, for backing the idea of a, of a no-fly zone, which is something, obviously, that the Ukrainian president and Ukrainian officials are really pushing for. Um, I talked to the former U.S. ambassador uh, to Ukraine, Stephen Pfeiffer, and he, he was saying that one major drawback of a no-fly zone, besides the obvious it provokes potentially direct conflict uh, you know, of, a Rus- of an American plane shooting down a Russian plane, uh, the ambassador was pointing out that in order to protect U.S. and allied planes, they would have to bomb anti-aircraft weapons in Belarus and maybe even Russia itself, in addition to Russian anti-aircraft assets already in Ukraine. Talk to me about your support for for the no-fly zone and, and those arguments against it. Look, Anderson, there's risk, and uh, I'm not going to deny that, and we should obviously look at that with wide eyes, o- with eyes wide open, but... You know, I think there's risk in inaction, too, at the moment. Uh, What I fear in the long term is that if Russia ultimately does take control of Kyiv or all of Ukraine or most of Ukraine and we wake up every morning and continue to see thousands upon thousands of civilians killed and all these tragic stories, there will be a moment where we decide we have to. And by that time, uh, I think you're significantly in a much more risky spot because much more Russian equipment will be moved in. And I want to be clear. You know, I think there's options. There's a, a no-fly zone over all of Ukraine. There's Western Ukraine and a humanitarian no-fly zone. I think we've done a lot as the U.S. and our allies, and so this isn't an attack on the response so far. I just fear that we're going to get to the moment where we're going to be compelled to, and uh, we should not fear Russia in that, in that context. Uh, you've raised two interesting ideas, which a lot of people haven't talked about. So I want to actually ask you now about them a little further. One of them, which you just mentioned, is an, basically kind of an air corridor, humanitarian air corridor that I guess would be you know, protected by U.S. planes or NATO planes or allied country planes or countries who are willing to if it wasn't NATO per se. Um, and that would, what, allow the, the flight of, of supplies in? Yeah, so if you think of it similar to maybe like a Berlin airlift, uh, if you can protect a corridor, you can allow planes to fly in, drop supplies, even drop armaments, whatever that takes. If it's a agreed upon one, you know, the Russians have violated, frankly, every attempt to have humanitarian corridors so far. Uh, you would limit it to just supplies and medical. But I think uh, we have to look at those different variations of what we can do on a no-fly zone. But I think the important thing is this. Uh, The old Soviet Union used to threaten the use of nuclear weapons all the time. If Ukraine ends up defeating Russia, which we all pray for, if you think Vladimir Putin is crazy enough to use nukes against NATO and the West for uh, defending the skies of a sovereign country that invited them to do it, I I think we have to be realistic that he may very well just use them on Ukraine if he loses. He's a crazy man. We've done a great job, I think, of standing up to him so far. There's a few more things I'd do. But we need to be prepared. This is a moment where he's not going to go quietly. You've also talked about the idea of, uh, which you just you had mentioned previously, about kind of a, a, a no-fly zone in the west of Ukraine. I'm in Lviv, which is a, it, it's much closer to the Polish border. It's the, the, the transit point for hundreds of thousands of people who are fleeing. They come to the Lviv train station. They try to get further, uh, w- uh, further west over to Poland or, or some of the other countries, Moldova, R- Romania, and the like. Um, there's even has been talk of if Kyiv fell, that uh, there'd perhaps be Ukrainian government uh, in charge in Lviv, and that would be the site, the seat of power. What would that? What would a, a no-fly zone in western Ukraine accomplish? Yeah, it would be basically that. It would be protecting an area for if civilians need to flee, to flee, that they can be protected. Uh, It alleviates some of the pressure, obviously, on Europe, who's going to be taking, you know, we've had, what, a million refugees. There's 40-some million people that live in Ukraine. It allows a place, if, you know, God forbid, Kiev does fall, to be able to have that government in exile that you mentioned and continue to train, equip, and support the Ukrainian army as they try to take back the rest of Ukraine. But keep in mind, uh, I think if we get to a point, and this is where we have to remember as we're making decisions today, where we see Kiev fall or we see you know, a significant part of Ukraine fall or, God forbid, a defeat of the Ukrainian army, taking back Ukraine is going to be far bloodier than anything we've seen today. 
You, you sit on the, the Committee for Energy and Commerce. We've heard, you know, a number of people talking about on both sides of the aisle pushing for a ban on Russian oil and gas to the U.S. Do you agree with that idea of a ban? And do you think it's something that that actually might happen? I, I think it's, it's certainly gaining steam. I think it should happen. Absolutely. The American people have to be ready for even higher energy prices. I think... You know, there is an understanding of that this is, in essence, a small price to pay, particularly if you look at what's going on in Ukraine and you put yourself in their shoes. That's a cost of defending freedom. Um, and we have over, uh, maybe as of today, you know, 700 million some barrels in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve. That's what this is for, for these moments. I think we have to do it. This is the one thing that Russia actually makes money on is their energy. And so it may be painful, but I think we absolutely have to ban those imports. Mm. Congressman Adam Kinzinger, I appreciate your time. Thank you.